Hello my soccer universe, we have a field for Euro 2020 and I had yesterday the worst case scenario, which yeah, it was not that, uh, <laughs> how do I say, it was not that unexpected, although I really did not expect it because otherwise I would have done it. I have no jersey to wear, all the four teams that I won yesterday, yes I had the jersey of only one single team and that team was so close and still not there, so I decided let's wear my jersey from UEFA Euro 2008 because we have Euro 2020 coming up. I could have worn maybe Austria as well or whatever, but you know. Let's do it. Uh, interestingly, I think very late into the late games, even, I mean, the, the, early, the early game had already ended. I think all the away teams were leading 1 0. And that was about to be my headline for this entire video. And then in every single game, there was a late goal and the late goals added to the drama of these playoffs so yeah uh, it was a somewhat exciting evening although again as expected the games were not all that great you just came from the leagues you're tired you come together you need to play an important game yes the fire was there but um there was not too much action there as well Let's look through the results of the of, of the games and we'll start, of course, in Tbilisi, where Georgia played North Macedonia. Both teams would qualify for the first time. Duh! I mean, this is the League D. Um, and yeah, I, th I actually saw quite some of the match and I found it, you know, that typically not much happening. Maybe uh, Georgia first half a little bit better, but then uh, in the second half, you could see that the uh, quality of North Macedonia was coming through, especially the goal played where Elmas had the ball on the left side and, you know, kept hold, hold, holding it, fainted here, back, uh, left, right. Uh, then uh, played it in, I think, to Pandev, who played it back to uh, Nestorovsky, who then immediately played it back to Pandev, suddenly is free and uh, puts it in. This was a really well-played goal. And this proved to be the winner. I think uh, Georgia didn't really have a chance for an e equalizer. And so um, North Macedonia qualifies for the first time. Congratulations to them. Uh, we played the qualification group with them. And now we played them with, against them in, in the year. We, Austria, uh, as well. So that was um, kind of unexpected. But, you know, one of those unexpected teams would make it. And then the late games, we will go from A, B, C, in path A, I said it before, I really, really do not find it right that Iceland had to play away from home. They were the only League A team, so you're going to play uh, path A, you should have home games all through. Anyway, uh, I was there uh, in one way, uh, it was probably good that Iceland had eliminated Romania. I mean, um, yes, this would have... Uh, it was good for the group for Austria because now uh, Romania is not, not playing. But that, that, that was not my main concern. My main concern is Romania and Hungary are playing. That is not a nice matchup uh, because the two nations are at loggerheads with each other. So uh, that would have been iffy. But you know, it was Hungary against Iceland in New Ferenc Buschkirch Arena. And Iceland was the only team that I had, so I was more for Iceland. Uh, don't get, 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 get me wrong, I said it in my preview video. Uh, I think having Hungary back, Hungary is such a traditional power that it's nice to see them back. But my heart went definitely with Iceland there. And it started well. Uh, a free kick from Sigurdsson and uh, Peter Kulici make an absolute mess of it. He has the ball and fumbles it into his own net. And that played Iceland in the cards beautifully. They just had to sit back and defend. And that's what they can do very, very well in many regards. And for most of the time, there was not many chances. I think Orban had had one of the first chance, but there were not really many great chances for Hungary because Iceland just frustrated them. And then when I was just getting ready, um, saying okay i need to buy only you know i made made a quick cal calculation how many additional jerseys would i have to buy to get a jersey from every team in euro 2008 the count is if Arsenal makes it six other otherwise it's seven so my wallet was also kind of saying yeah please please iceland no nego and this was just such a billiard goal i mean the ball count comes in then i think um iceland defender was it uh i don't know i, I 
whoever, Gudmundsen, I think it, it was it. It goes on his knee, then it goes on the back of another Iceland fan, and it falls in the path of Nego, who pulls it into the net. Uh, darn it! Uh, will will be over time. That, that, that was the other thing. I, I was expecting overtime at least uh, two penalty sh sh shootouts. Uh, that did not quite deliver. But at that point, I was, yeah, okay, o o overtime. But then all the other games were headed for overtime times. So I say, okay, fine. Uh, Iceland, I think, had that a quick uh, break forward and maybe could have made even something. But then uh, the ball goes to Soberschlei, who walks through and Put it with a nice shot into the net in the 92nd. Uh, then there was another Iceland throwing everything forward, but it was never meant to me. Hungary is through. Congratulations, Hungary. You are now in the group of death. <laughs> but uh, that's the one thing. Um, it's also, the, I think UEFA will be happy and maybe they helped it a little bit. Uh, I don't want to see it conspiracy theories. Um, it is true that we have two uh, hosts qualifying. And so Hungary is in the group of death, but they can play at home against Portugal and play at home against France. They have to travel to Germany for that one. So yeah, uh, I think Hungary is a side that uh, surprised many this year. I think they will be a uh, good opponent, but uh, everything but last place in the group would be a surprise. Then that game that I did not watch until extra time, Northern Ireland and Slovakia. Um, Kuczka gave Slovakia the lead after a horrible uh, mistake. I think Seville wanted to head it back, uh, you know, wanna, and right in the path of Kuczka who runs on goal and through. Uh, and uh, the lively opening with that goal got a little bit uh, destroyed the game because now uh, Slovakia could hold back. Northern Ireland though came out and they get their all their goal late as well in the 88th. Skrinja own goal, but there would have been two players who would have pulled it in, but it looked unlucky for Skrinja. And then I think Lafferty even hit the post late on. And you know, whenever it goes in overtime, you think, yeah, the team has now the upper hand and will go forward, but it actually it was not much happening. Then was a really uh, an, an attack that was not, not really that da da dangerous when then Duris has the ball and shoots it in a way into the near corner. It was a little, a little bit of a weird goal, but it proved to be decided that they decided there was only one big chance at the end for Northern Ireland to put that, that would have settled it. Uh, and so Slovakia is through. Um, I don't know if Northern Ireland would have gone through. They would have played, of course, in the group with um, in not Slovakia, in the group with Spain, Sweden, Poland, and Slovakia. There's a group that is played partly in Dublin. So I don't know. This would have been at least halfway hosts there, in that case. Uh, but you know, I, d I don't know how much the tension. I, I hope there are no tensions at the moment any, any, anymore. Uh, but now we have it that Slovakia is the true and congratulations Slovakia, also congratulations North Macedonia for making it, which left the big one. And to tell you how much I favored the Serbs in that one, I think that Serbia was the most talented squad of all the teams in the playoffs, bar none. Yes, they had a few uh, players missing, COVID and so on, but uh, Serbia for sure most talented squad in there. Uh, but I also know, like a typical Balkan team, uh, they don't play well together and there's also quite some unrest within the country. So, uh, and we know within the Federation, it's not all smooth sailing. But I think still, Serbia was a team that I actually wanted to see at the Euros. And uh, for that reason, I was really rooting for Serbia to make it out of this group. Uh, also having a nice Croatia-Serbia matchup would have been something. Uh, but that is nothing against the Scots, it's just that Scotland has been disappointing me over the years so much that I really want to, I, I know they have some talented players in, in there, with Robertson, McTominay, McTom that they play at the highest level, but I always thought that the Scotland squad itself rather tame, especially in qualifying, they were, I really was disappointed by them. So yeah, fair, squarely in Serbia's corner for that one. Um, but I have to say, the Scots came out and played a little bit better. I wasn't at first sure whether it was a tactic by the Serbs to kind of sit back a little bit and let the Scots uh, come and then, because you're more talented, you hit them on, on the counter -track. And, and gotta be said, the best chance in the first half was a wide range shot from Lukic that uh, 
with a little better placement would have gone easily. Uh, the goalkeeper would not have gotten there. So, uh, but it was, you know, it was a tense first half. It was not a good first half. Um, in the second half, though, the Scots really came came out and were the better team for uh, at least the first 20, 20, 20 minutes. And they forced the Serbs into uh, errors. And I think it was um, not Jovic, um, Kostic. Uh, who played the ball very poorly out. I mean, they just had uh, stalled a Scottish attack. He plays the ball out. It goes into the path of McGregor, who plays to Christie, and who holds on to the ball, seemingly one what's playing, then takes the shot, goes on to the post and in. 56 as the second minute, 1-0 Scotland. And I have to say, probably not undeserved uh, at that point. Um, of course, we knew that Serbia will gonna come back and will, will, will try to attack. And yes, they had done a few chances, but nothing really that big. But just like the other games, in the 90th minute, Mladenovic cross in and Jovic, very free. A header that I, you know, it bounces way before the goal and goes way high up uh, in, into net over the goalkeeper. That's a goal that I'm sure he would like to have back. Upper hand Ser Serbia, who in when it goes to overtime, I think in the first halves it was all Serbia and Goodell had a great shot that um, was uh, saved. Uh, but, you know, the closer it came to penalties, the more the Scots hung in and Serbia didn't really want to go all out either. And so it goes to penalties. And this was for one of the most boring penalty shooters because everyone was he he hitting it. I think uh, the first two Scottish penalties had a chance to be saved uh, by Griffiths and McGregor. Griffiths and McGregor. Uh, and everything else, I mean, uh, Serbs, Scots, they all put it in quite easily. And so it's 5-4 and for Serbia had, had, had of course a disadvantage of going second. It's 5-4, Mitrovic steps up and the penalty is saved and so the Scots go through for the first tournament and maybe me wearing these colors give a little bit credit to the Scots it means that uh, the Scots are qualifying for a big tournament for the first time since 98 in France and for the Euro first time since 96 in England and like back then they can now play games at home in Hampton Park except for the clash versus England Remember Gascoigne's goal against Scotland? Uh, prob probably the goal of the tournament back then, which I don't remember. It's such a great tour tournament overall, but yeah, that was a great goal. Uh, so yeah, we have them in Group D. So let's look at the final uh, groups. I should have done a projection uh, with Pro Probability, but didn't have, have the time to do so yet. Uh, we'll come in due time, maybe after the international break or so on. I will. Uh, go that. So we have in Group A nothing new there, Turkey, Italy, Wales and Switzerland. Then in Group B also was already said Denmark, Finland, Belgium and Russia. Actually a very interesting group I have to say. Group C, Netherlands, Ukraine, Austria and North Macedonia. Uh, group D now, uh, that, the, uh, that, 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 that group is played in the Netherlands and in um, um, uh, Bucharest. The first two, I forgot to say, uh, is played in Rome, so Italy has home field advantage and in Baku, where Turkey, I think, will, uh, if they will be speckled, will enjoy quite some uh, support. And Group B, of course, is in Copenhagen and in, uh, Rus in the Russian St. Petersburg. Then we go to Group D, uh, which is England, Croatia, Scotland and the Czechs. I think it's also another uh, interesting group, which of course will be played in Glasgow, Hampton Park and in Wembley. So uh, though the two Brits have uh, home field at, at advantage, Group E uh, in Bilbao and in Dublin, Spain, Sweden, Poland and Slovakia. And then Group F, which is the group of death, um, has is, will be played in Budapest and in Munich. Hungary, Portugal, France, and Germany. That's very, 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 very tasty. So yeah, we have a Euro uh, set. Let's see if they it will play, when it will be played, if it will play in all the stadiums that are now set, because that's also shaking the discussions of having only one country. And I would say that one country will be Russia if it will be played. So let's see. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Drop a line below what you thought about the games yesterday and how Euro 2020 will go. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, 
I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also consider subscribing to my channel to keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.